Welcome to the program. Well, we have an interesting hour for you. And let me just say, sort of by way of introduction here, that according to Daniel 9.27, the Antichrist is going to make a deal with the Jewish people during the tribulation, and he's going to pretend to be their friend, well, for the early stages of the tribulation, and then he turns on them and he turns into the real beast, and that's another name for him, that he is. And we often say on Understanding the Times Radio that the purpose of the tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. So what about their temple? Now remember, there have already been two temples, both destroyed, the last one in 70 AD, but there's coming a third temple, and this might be called the Temple of the Antichrist, the Tribulation Temple. It's the temple that the Jews are passionately wanting to build today with great expectations that it will be a house of worship and soon. Someone who's speaking into this topic, and I think very effectively, is Pastor Billy Crone. You've heard him on my program several times. It was at my conference last September. He's got some products. We'll talk about those later, but I've perused a lot of what he's talking about on this topic and others, and I thought I'd get him into the studio here to talk for at least the duration of the program on this temple situation. Pastor Billy Crone, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Jan, so much. It's always a pleasure to be on. The point I hear you making when I hear you presenting on this topic, and I think this is why it's so relevant to my audience, which is probably 99% Christians, is that the Jews are ready to not rebuild their temple, well, in 10 years, in five years. They're ready for it to be rebuilt, and their heart is to have it rebuilt today. Yeah, exactly. And the point for we as Christians is simply this. This, we know, hands down, is going to be the actual temple that the actual Antichrist is going up into in the seven-year tribulation at the halfway point and commit what's called the abomination of desolation, Mm -hmm. where he basically says, worship me, I'm God now. And we see that repeatedly in the Old Testament, New Testament, certainly Daniel 9, Matthew 24, Revelation 11, 2 Thessalonians 2. This is an event that takes place in the seven-year tribulation. And it's a major event, and you have to have a Jewish temple in existence for this to to transpire. Well, that's in the seven-year tribulation. As Christians, we know we leave it the rapture prior to the seven-year tribulation. So our action point is, yes, we don't know the day nor the hour, but if we see the Jewish people ready right now to build this temple that's going to be hands down in the seven-year tribulation, man, I tell you what, the blessed hope, the rapture has got to be getting close. Yeah, the point I hear you making, and I would second it, is it's later than you think, folks. You've got 13 points here, 13 ways we know the Jewish people really are ready to rebuild this last day's temple. I'm going to run through them. It's going to take me literally a minute, and as time allows, we're going to talk about some of these 13 bullet points, but the 13 ways we know that they're ready for the temple. Number one, the Jewish people are ready to the Muslim people are fearful. Three, the Jewish leaders are ready. Four, the non-Jewish leaders are ready. The next point, the organizations are ready. Then the plans are ready. Next point, the finances are ready. The cow is ready or the red heifer. The Sanhedrin is ready. The priesthood is ready. The ceremonies are ready. The temple articles are ready. And the miscellaneous items are ready. And then, Billy Crone, you say just about everything you can think of is ready to go for that temple, including the actual crown they want to put on the head of the guy they think will be their Messiah. Talk to me for a minute about this crown. Well, again, not only is this what's going on in the news, well, frankly, Jan, we're all distracted. Yeah. We're, we're worried about the economy, who's going to win what game and all that stuff. But most people are clueless of what's going on over there in Jerusalem. But right now, and this just happened a couple months ago, talk about hot off the press. They are so ripe to build this temple, and they believe it's going to usher in the Messiah, that right now they are doing a fundraising campaign. It's called Construct the Message golden royal crown campaign and this is from one of the rabbis who's directing the king david's tomb there they are drumming up the money to build this golden jeweled encrusted crown that they want to place on the messiah on his arrival in jerusalem in fact let me read to you what they say about this project which they believe is going to hasten the arrival of what they believe will be their messiah king but it says there for two thousand years israel has waited for the mashiach or the messiah and as a symbol of our belief that this period of Waiting has ended, we should prepare a crown since the first act of the Mashiach will be to restore the Davidic dynasty, which will be unlike any other kingship that has ever existed.
arrested, and this includes the temple being rebuilt and the temple service reinstated. They are right now drawing the funds together to build this crown that they think they're going to place on the Messiah. And there are some other items, too, and I want to talk about them as we move into it more than the crown. Believe me, lots of things are getting ready. But here, I want to ask you this, because the Jews believe this temple will bring peace to all mankind. That just reminds me a little bit of the globalists think that their one world, new world order idea is going to solve all mankind's problems around the world, no poverty, no war, etc. Some of the Jews believe that this temple will bring peace to all mankind. In other words, their hope and their goal and their dreams, it's not just for themselves, it's to better the whole world if they have this new temple. Yeah, exactly. And I think what's unfortunate is, of course, we know Romans chapter 11, Paul talks about that currently the Jewish people are under a temporary blindness or a temporary hardness. They're blind to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. You're not waiting for the Messiah. He's already come. We also know that they're not in a good spiritual state because the very event that starts the seven-year tribulation, Daniel 9, 27, is they make a treaty, a covenant of all people, the actual Antichrist. So we know that's happening. Now, what's also unfortunate, talk about a veil over their eyes, is what they are quoting about this temple that they're going to build, which is going to be the one in the seven-year tribulation, they're quoting passages dealing with the millennial temple. It's a different temple. That's now, right. That's actually the fourth temple. Exactly. And what's unfortunate is they're out of chronological yes. order. But they think in the millennial yeah, Jesus, the real one and only Messiah, is going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem in the millennium, and it is going to be a time of great peace and prosperity, but that's a different temple. But see, they're quoting passages thinking mm-hmm. that this temple they want to build now is that temple, and it's not. It's the one that the Antichrist is going to go up into. And the Scripture tells us it's basically good news, bad news at that event. The good news is once the Antichrist commits the abomination of desolation, the Jewish people's eyes are open. They realize, oh, no, boy, right. we make a mistake. But it comes at a horrible price. The Scripture tells us that after that event, then the Antichrist, he commits the abomination of desolation. He says, now worship me as God. Obviously, the Jewish people aren't going to go along with that. But the scripture says two-thirds are going to be taken out by the mm-hmm. Antichrist, and another one-third is going to be sovereignly protected. So it's unfortunate. They think it's going to be world peace. It's the wrong temple. It's the temple that actually, as rough as this sounds, it's actually going to be the temple that's going to lead to another Jewish holocaust. Well, you and I get criticized for our theology believing this. Pastor Billy Crone, and he is my guest for the hour. You're listening to Understand the Times Radio, Jan Markell here. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes here about President Donald Trump. He has done some incredible things on behalf of Israel in just over two years, two and a half years in office here. Not only that, but his role is so significant that a coin has been made with an image of President Trump alongside King Cyrus. Billy Crone, I'm going to play a clip. It's you and me, actually. I'm talking to you at my conference last fall. Very short clip here where we talk about this. And folks, if you would like to see this coin with President Trump and King Cyrus and other images on the backside, go to our YouTube presentation that we post every week of the programming. There we have some visual illustrations for you. Let me just play this quick clip. I want to get my hands on one of these coins. And so sure enough, I risked, paid up for it. And uh, two weeks later, they actually sent it. And I couldn't believe it. it was, it's a surreal. It still is to this day, Jan. It's a real moment for me. Uh, And I think it should be for any Christian to hold this in your hands because you not only see our president's head on a Jewish temple coin, the shekel coin Mm -hmm. for the temple, which they state is for the purposes of aiding in building this next temple, which we know will be the one the The Antichrist goes into halfway into the seven-year tribulation. You're holding a piece a prophetic history in your hand. But he's he's uh, layered there with Cyrus. Yeah. Cyrus, of course, we know, helped the Jews build the temple again. That's This isn't just commemorative. They did this because they believe, right now as we are doing this interview, the Jewish people believe our president, President Trump, will be the one to help them rebuild this third temple mm-hmm. that we know the Antichrist is going up into. And then, lest you doubt, that's what the back end is, yeah. is with the temple on there. And, and it's just... I, I wanted to get it also just to verify that, but it's the wow factor. And everybody that's seen it, touched it, yeah. it, it, it is that surreal moment, Jen, where you, you literally say, wow, this is well, happening before our very eyes. There's a lot of, of temple talk. There's a lot of, I mean, the vestments are being prepared. Uh, the, the sheep are ready. Um, now, a red heifer was born recently in the last two, three weeks, and there have been other red heifers. and. They do uh, fizzle out because they get a white hair on them. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is um, lots of things are, the priests are getting ready. Everything's getting ready. And then we see things like like this. And, you know, some would say, well, 
the next temple is irrelevant to Christians. Well, yes and no. I mean, no, because it's a sign of, again, of the lateness of the hour. Right. If we're actually talking uh, the building of the temple, the items within the temple, the priests of the t and now we have a coin. Right. Well, and, and that's that's right. It, okay, are, are, are we Christians going to be there when the Antichrist no. goes? No, of course not. We, we know that. Uh, are, are the Christians going to be there? Because well, I'll get emails and phone calls. I'm sure you do yeah. too. Hey, uh, should I use my ATM card? It's a cashless thing. And maybe that's the mark of the beast. No. The Bible says the mark of the beast does not come into play until the seven-year tribulation. The church is raptured out yeah. prior. So, so then you don't throw the baby out the bathwater. You don't say, well, then I don't need to know any of this information because we're not going to have to deal with it. No. The point is this. If we see the technology, yeah. if we see the actual coins, if we see the alignment of nations, if we see the technology, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for all these events that are clearly going to take place during the seven-year tribulation, for us, again, it should translate to excitement. Yeah. Well, wait a second. If we already have the technology to pull off the mark of the beast, if we already have the Jewish people just sitting there ready to go, even producing the coins for this temple, in the seven, then how much closer is the rapture of the church? Yes, we don't know the day nor the hour, but all this does is show us it is so imminent, more so ever than in the history of the church, and we better maximize this opportunity. It's a time to be excited. It's a time to be faithful, and it's a time to stop procrastinating, yeah. get busy sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this subject matter, we are carrying Billy Crone's DVD set. You get 10 DVDs. It's 20 lessons on 10 DVDs, The Jewish People and the Antichrist. You find it in my store, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. Just go to my store or give us a call or sign up for my print and e-newsletter. You find our products in the print and e-newsletter. Sign up online. Pastor Billy Crone, and that was last September that you and I taped that little session. Yeah, you kind of have to see some of this to believe it. I want to just move quickly. I want to talk for a moment or two about the Antichrist. Just because I'm moving from Donald Trump and building the temple and all of that, no way am I suggesting, folks, please don't hear me saying Donald Trump is the Antichrist. First of all, we shouldn't try to be figuring these things out. Secondly, I think that's kind of a crazy conclusion that some people are drawing. Billy, I just want to address, because here's the thing, he's going to be the Antichrist, not Donald Trump. The Antichrist is going to be the ultimate deal maker. My question to you is, how how do you think he will implement this plan to fool the Jewish people? Because number one, the world is going to be in chaos. It's a tribulation. And how can Israel be in any kind of security, any kind of safety when everything is in chaos? And is he going to take them under his wings so sufficiently that they're totally trusting in him? Well, again, we know that spiritually they're not in a good state. Yeah. Because again, we know that of all people on the planet to make a covenant with, it's the actual Antichrist. We also know that the Bible says in Revelation that Israel at that time was likened unto Sodom and Egypt, which obviously typifies a, not a good state as well. They're not able to recognize who this guy really is in essence until it's too late at the midway point, and then it comes with a prize. Many people have often wondered, okay, this covenant that he makes, which we know, Daniel 9.27, is what starts the actual seven-year tribulation, the final week of Daniel's 70th week prophecy. It starts when the Antichrist makes his covenant with the Jewish people. And we also know, again, as we're talking, there has to be a rebuilt Jewish temple in that time frame. Can't necessarily say, thus saith the Lord, but this guy is not only going to make a deal with him, but many people wonder, myself included, if in fact part of the dangling carrot, if you will, to get this covenant going is, is he going to be the ultimate, like you said, Jen, the deal maker to not provide this false peace and safety and security for them, but also permission to build the temple. In fact, what's interesting is one of the Temple Mount folks that are working the organizations to build it, a gentleman named Gershon Solomon, and he's with the Temple Mount Faithful. There's also another group called the Temple Institute building the articles as we literally speak. But Gershon Solomon, not too long ago, he wrote a letter to Pope Francis in the Vatican, and he told them to immediately return the golden temple menorah that he says that the Vatican has there and has had ever since the Romans robbed the second temple in Jerusalem. And for proof of that, you see them doing that at the Roman triumphal arch of Titus that's still in existence in Rome today. And he says, you need to give that back to us. That belongs to us. And then he even charges them with the fact that in the Middle Ages, even Jewish travelers who would go to the Vatican, everybody could see these vessels, including the Temple Menorah, there at the Vatican. As of 1948, shocker, when Israel became a nation again, they hauled them away 
and hit them because they were afraid that they were going to rebuild the temple at that point. Gershon Solomon from the Temple Mount Faithful, he's telling them, you not only need to give it back, and if you keep ignoring me, listen to what he says. He says he's going to ask an international court to command the Vatican to do so. I said all that to get to this. I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord. It's all stuff that's going on right now as we're talking. It makes you wonder if this is what some future world leader is going to do mm -hmm. on behalf of the Israelites. Not only provide a false peace and security, which Paul says when people are crying out peace and security, sudden destruction comes on them, but could this guy be the guy who works with the Vatican and the world scene in an international court setting to get their articles back that they're claiming that the Vatican is. And so you, you wonder, could this all be part of that scenario that's going to start the seven-year tribulation in this covenant deal? It wouldn't obviously surprise me, but like you mentioned, Jan, as Christians, we're not worried about who the Antichrist. We're not looking for the Antichrist. We're looking for Jesus Christ. But again, these points are important for us to let us know that the season is getting extremely close for the rapture that takes place prior. And play just a real short clip here, and it is Rabbi Tulevites, and he's talking about how they are praying for the Messiah and that he will come and build the temple. He says, we don't know when it's going to happen. We just know we're praying daily and we are preparing. You can just hear the longing in his voice. And I want to come back and follow up with an additional question to you, Billy. After the second temple was destroyed, the Jewish people were scattered and were exiled all over the world all over the four corners of the globe and didn't have the chance to build the temple. However, nowadays we're back. We're back in the land of Israel. And so many said that since we are here, we have to, we have to immediately build the Beit HaMikdash. It's, we have the opportunity to do so. And so in fact today, Many Jewish people are actively preparing the utensils. We are building a menorah. We're building the altar. We are training all of the priests to learn to do the services in order to build the temple. Others feel that our generation is just not worthy. The political climate is not there. It's way too volatile. And that we should just be praying for the Messiah to come and that he will lead the generation to build the temple. So when will the third temple be built? I can't give you an exact answer, but I do know that many of us are praying every day. Many of us are actively preparing and we are all eagerly awaiting the day that the Beit HaMikdash, the third temple, will become a house of prayer for all nations right in the center of Jerusalem. I'm going back to the Antichrist issue, Billy Crone, because, again, you heard the longing in Rabbi Weiss's voice there about how much they want this temple, at least a certain segment of the Jewish people do. This Antichrist is going to come along and really fool them, as I said. You've done a wonderful presentation. We carry it on the seals of Revelations. If, in fact, the seals of Revelation are being poured out during that, obviously they play out during the tribulation, there's going to have to be some kind of peace and security within Israel itself for any of this to happen for him to settle down the Arab world, for instance, and get them to allow them to build that temple. Exactly, Jen. I think that's a great conclusion. And also, I think, is conclusive when you understand the events of the seven-year tribulation. I think you look at the events of the seven-year tribulation that the Antichrist has a personal, if you will, vestige in protecting, at least initially, the Jewish people. Why? Because at the halfway point, what does he do? That's right. He betrays them. He betrays them, but he goes up into that rebuilt temple, and that's the halfway point. So if anything, he doesn't want Jerusalem and the Jewish people destroyed because he needs them to make it, if you will, to the abomination of desolation. That's true. Right? And then at that point, the scripture tells us he shows us his true colors, and that's unfortunate. And again, you think about, we've had many people, you talk about the Arabs. This is another wild thing that's going on, Jam, because a lot of people are going like, okay, listen, they can have the desire all they want, they can pray all they want, but man, there's no way they're going to get get this temple built because of the Dome of the Rock, the Alaska Mosque, the Muslim community. They're never going to stand for this. Again, while we're all distracted with the economy and who's going to win what game, mm -hmm. don't forget that incredible cat that keeps playing the piano on YouTube. <laughs> that might be one of my cats since I got 
I got a barrel of them here. And uh, but while we're doing that right now, there is, believe it or not, it's wild, Jen, and this is all recent news. There is a sect of the Muslim community that is working with the Jewish rabbis to build a universal temple where they're going to keep the Dome of the Rock, the Al Aska Mosque, on there. They say that there's enough room for quote all three Abrahamic religions to exist. Okay, and we don't need to fight about it. And it will become a perfect universal temple for all nations to come and worship together in tranquility. That's coming from the Muslim community. In fact, we oh, actually oh. share a video clip interview of the Muslims meeting with Rabbi Yehuda Glick, mm-hmm. and they're all chumming up saying, yes, we can do this. We can cooperate and build this universal temple. Well, now, again, and I played that little clip of you introducing the program where you're kind of talking a little bit about one world religion type things here. I get it, Rabbi Glick, he's working with the Muslims and the Pope for a universal temple. Of course, we know many Jews would never stand for that. Obviously, some are going along with it. What is this? Just can we all get along here? I don't understand the mentality behind it. In our investigation, Jan, again, this is stuff that's just hot off the press. is going on right now. We share the video clips, the interviews. What I've discovered is there's two groups of thinking when it comes to the temple with the rabbis and the, the Jewish community. The one is what we're talking about is the one that are basically chumming up with the Pope, mm-hmm. and this is some of the head rabbis, and we share interviews and stuff. They are, are taking what I would call the compromise position. They're just being pragmatic. We just got to get it done, right? We're tired of waiting. And so what if we have to work with the Muslims and they're going to have their temple there, the Dome of the Rock there, and the Alaska Mosque? We, at least we got our temple. So there is a huge section of that. Rabbi David Lau and Rabbi Yehuda Glick, again, are two of the big proponents of that. However, there is what I call the traditional sect, and they're like, oh, no, we ain't. That temple mount is going to be clean, off, and it is going to be just the Jewish temple mm-hmm. and that alone. However it transpires, we don't know. Again, we're not going to be here for that. But the point is, whether it's the traditional, what I call route. It's just the Jewish temple, or it's this universal temple that they're working together with the Pope and the Muslim community. What's the point for you and I? They're ready to build Mm -hmm. it regardless. Mm -hmm. Do you think in all practicality that they could possibly construct this temple, perhaps side by side, next to the mosque and the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock? You think that's a practical solution? Well, in fact, one of the interviews that we share, it's from a Jewish program called Holy Land Uncovered, interviewing the Muslim clerics and then the Rabbi Yehuda Glick talking about this universal temple. She actually asked that question, is this really doable? Is this feasible? And not only with the finances and the permits, but are you serious? You guys are going to work together? Out of their own mouth, and you can see it on the video, that they say, oh yeah, there's, quote, room enough for all of us here. There's a section Mm -hmm. over here we can lay it there, and we'll all just worship there in tranquility, and it'll be just fine. And so whether we want to scoff at it or not, they believe it can happen. And one of the Muslim leaders that's a big proponent of this is a guy named Adnan Akhtar. He's not only a a very influential Muslim leader and author, and he's like 65 million books in print around the world, but he believes that they not only can build that universal temple there, all of them coexisting, his words are with modern technology, once they start, they could have that temple ready to go within one year. Really? And that certainly fits the time frame, because remember, we know, let's say, we can't say, let's say the Lord, but part of the Daniel 927 agreement, the covenant, is here, we'll also let you build the temple, which again, Daniel 927, that covenant is what Mm -hmm. starts the seven-year tribulation. Mm -hmm. Well, we know it has to be done by three and a half years, the midway point, because that's when the Antichrist does the abomination desolation. And so here he is saying, with modern technology, hey, we still got two and a half years to spare, that Mm -hmm. we could be in there acting like everything's great, and then all of a sudden, boom, the halfway point, the hammer comes down, the true colors of the Antichrist come out, and unfortunately, here comes another Holocaust. I'm sure you'd like to see some of the videos that we're talking about, and you can do that by getting this 10 DVD set, 20 Lessons, the Jewish People and the Antichrist, which we're carrying. You can give us a call or go online to our store. It might be good for an adult class that you're having or a home group. be 20 Lessons on the Jewish People and the Antichrist. And the beauty of it is all of the little videos that are included in it, the news clippings, the interviews. I've seen probably half, if not more, of the videos contained in the teachings, which I think say an awful lot. Your teaching is the best. Then you complement it with all the clippings and the news articles and the news items. Well, and that's certainly the Lord Jen is a lot more work, but I tell you, I agree. It's needed because of our scoffing society, and dare I say, right. even the scoffing society in the church. Absolutely. You, Particularly in this day and age when this topic has kind of been tossed aside. Oh, exactly. It's one thing for us to say, hey, I'm quoting the Jerusalem Post or Breaking Israel.
Israel News. Here's what they said about the temple, and people go, yeah, whatever. But when you share the actual video clip of the actual rabbi or the actual Jewish leader, including people like Benjamin Netanyahu, the actual yeah, words of Pope Francis that. making these statements, how do you deny that? We're going to play Prime Minister Netanyahu when I come back. I also, when I come back, Billy Crone, I want to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. How do we have a rebuilt temple, third temple, without the Ark of the Covenant? We'll talk about that in just a minute, folks. Don't go away. We live in extraordinary times. Headlines are a herald of His coming. We want to keep you appraised of news and information, help you contend for the faith, and be watchmen on the wall. If you are on the run and miss a program or segment, catch up electronically. The program is posted to our YouTube channel under Jan Markell, to our website, olivetreeviews.org, that's olivetreeviews.org, and to oneplace.com Saturday morning. You can sign up for the OnePlace.com mobile app and have the program downloaded to your devices Saturday morning. More with Pastor Billy Crone and Jan Markell in a moment. It is now on the horizon. Understanding the Times 2019, Saturday, September 21st. Tickets will go on sale June 1st. They are general admission only and are $25 but include a lunch. After June 1st, we're asking that you call the Brush Fire Agency at 888-338-5338 or sign up online at brushfire.com. That number again is 888-338-5338 after June 1st. We are featuring six speakers and we begin at 8.45 a.m. Church doors open at 7 a.m. And the location is again Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, just outside of Minneapolis. Consult our website for hotel information. Our speakers include Dr. Robert Jeffress. These signs that have been around for a long time, they are increasing in frequency and intensity. I think something big's about to happen. Yeah, I believe I we're too. in the last days. I believe the Lord is going to return. Amir Sarfati. And at the last trumpet, we're going to be out of here. There will be certain events around the world, and there will be the last trumpet, and we don't know the day, and we don't know the hour, but we understand the times and the seasons. Pastor J.D. Farag. Because there's coming a time, and I believe it's very soon, when that trumpet's going to sound, and everything here matters no more. I mean, shouldn't that affect us, the way we live our lives? Pastor Jack Hibbs. And he's not only spoken to us in his word, he is speaking to us right now in world events. He's requiring you and I to take what we're seeing in the world and match it up against the Word of God. And Jan Markell. I believe that the world is longing for a man with a plan, for a Mr. Fix-It. It says down at the bottom of here, is there a leader who can stop the chaos? We will also have a greeting from Lori Cardoza Moore from Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. The event will be live streamed at no cost. Again, that's Saturday, September 21, just outside of Minneapolis. We invite all remnant believers to better understand the times and become watchmen on the wall. Make friends for life at this annual conference. Learn why things aren't falling apart. They are falling into place. temple that the actual Antichrist is going to go up into halfway into the seven-year tribulation and commit the abomination of desolation. That's right. the temple we are talking about that's mentioned in the scripture in the New Testament 2,000 years ago, the book of Daniel, even further than that. That's the temple that they're ready to build right now. And they have all the details, as the clip just mentioned, even the ashes of a pure red heifer. We hear from many of you that you appreciate our angle of news and information and particularly the encouragement that the King is coming any day. You can find daily news stories and articles that reinforce this message at our website, olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. You can write us through our website or consider a tax-deductible check to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311 or call us central time at 763-559-4444 that's 763-559-4444 here's Jan Markell in Jerusalem in Jerusalem Abram passed the greatest test of faith and the right to be the father of our nation in Jerusalem 
King David established our capital 3,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, King Solomon built our temple, built our temple, built our temple, which stood for many centuries. In Jerusalem, Jewish exiles from Babylon rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, which stood for many more centuries. In Jerusalem, the Maccabees rededicated that temple, rededicated that temple, and restored Jewish sovereignty in this land. And it was here in Jerusalem, some 2,000 years later, that the soldiers of Israel spoke three immortal words, Hal Habayt Biadenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands. The Temple Mount is in our hands, is in our hands. Words that lifted the spirit of the entire nation. We are in Jerusalem and we are here to stay. And we're talking about that for the hour because I have on the line from Las Vegas. He's pastor of the Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas. You can learn more at getalifemedia.com, getalifemedia.com. Pastor Billy Crone, let me just say quickly here that we've got an active presence on social media. Find us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube, where we try to get the message out. The social media is so important these days because people are congregating there, and many of them want to learn. So look us up on the various outlets of social media. And if you write to us, particularly if you send a gift, would you always tell us what station or what outlet? Are you listening on a real radio or electronically, a podcaster? However, just let us know how you listen. Pastor Billy Crone, I had said earlier, I want to talk to you about the Ark of the Covenant, and I do. How on earth do you have a temple without the Ark of the Covenant? But the various, can I say, bullet points that we've been talking about, and if we had time, we'd cover each and every one carefully about the Jewish people and the Antichrist and how they're going to play together in the tribulation. The church is gone, of course. The Muslim people are fearful. The Jewish leaders are ready. The organizations are ready. The plans are ready. The finances are ready. The cow is ready. The red heifer, the Sanhedrin is ready. Priesthood is ready. The ceremonies are ready. It's ready to go. And as we said in opening the program, it's ready not in five years, not in five weeks. It could be ready in five minutes. And the point is, that's how late the hour is, because this is a tribulation event. Well, what happens before the tribulation? The church is taken home to be with the Lord. Our point is that could happen at any minute. I think that's your point as well, is it not, Billy Crone? Oh, absolutely. We know that one thing you cannot do is you can't be a date setter. But the scripture does give us signs that it's getting close, i.e. the rapture. We know we leave prior to the seven-year tribulation. So the whole point of discussing any event, including the rebuilt Jewish temple, that's going to take place in the seven-year tribulation is, well, obviously, logically, biblically, we leave prior, so it's got to be getting close. And the temple is mentioned throughout the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. We know it's going to be rebuilt. And when you take a look, if you're paying attention to the news, the Jewish people are ready to build that thing now. And the key word is now. For decades, while we've been distracted, they have been making preparations to get everything ready to go. And I mean down to the minute detail, and that's what this study is all about. You know, another interesting point, and actually you bring it out in your DVD presentation, and that is almost every Jewish wedding ceremony, they recognize the temple and the longing for a rebuilt one. Of course, there's a parallel there to Christians and that our wedding day approaches as well, and that's when we meet the Lord Jesus in the the air and go with him home to heaven for those seven years as the tribulation plays out on earth and we come back and establish the millennial kingdom. But that Jewish wedding ceremony, talk to us just for a moment about it. There's many different ways that the Jewish people have embedded, not only in their media, but in their traditions, their holidays, yeah. including their wedding ceremonies, that one thing, yes, it's important that we're back in the land again, we're a nation again, we recapture Jerusalem again, that's great. But one thing that they realized, the heart of Israel, Jerusalem, is they've got to rebuild this temple. And most people don't realize is they've got that embedded, and we share the actual video and information in the study, that they've embedded that truth and that deep-seated desire in the Jewish wedding. Why? So that every Jewish couple getting married knows that they need to not only remind themselves, but any future generations, we've got to rebuild that temple. And it's all around the practice of where under the chuppah, the bridal chamber that they get married under in the Jewish wedding, then there comes an event where they take a glass and either by itself or they cover it up in a napkin of some sort or a cloth, and they basically put it on the ground, and then the crowd shouts out, Mazel Tov. Every time I share this, I joke with people, you know, I say, and then they smash it with their foot. I said, no, the reason why the Jewish people, of course, do this is because they have an over surplus of glassware, and this is their creative way to get rid of it. No, No. it's all about the desire that around the temple, 
and that the reason why they smash the glass in the marriage ceremony is to remind them that the last temple was smashed, mm-hmm. destroyed, shattered in 70 AD, and it's incumbent upon them now, this generation and all generation Jewish people, that they've got to rebuild it again. They're under a temporary blindness right now, but little do they know that the temple that they're preparing to build, and they've got it reminded people in their wedding ceremony, is unfortunately going to be the temple that the Antichrist goes up into and commits the abomination desolation. We want to move on to the lost Ark of the Covenant. Before I say that, I want to quickly throw in here, folks, you know, you can't wait forever to get tickets to Understanding the Times 2019 coming up September 21st. The $25, and that includes a lunch. It's general admission. Just go to brushfire.com or call the following number, 888-338-5338, 888-338-5338. Our speakers this fall include J.D. Farag, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Amir Sarfati, Jack Hibbs, yours truly. We just have a lot going that day. Lori Cardoza Moore going to give us a greeting. She's going to give a short presentation, but you're going to hear from some top teachers. Get the tickets brushfire.com or call them at that 888 number. Let me move on here. I just wanted to make that quick announcement. Some of you don't always hear our midpoint commercial break. Pastor Billy Crone, and he is my guest for the hour. Learn more at getalifemedia.com. The Ark of the Covenant. Some of us, I mean, we were totally intrigued with the 1980s movie. I think it's my favorite movie of all time, and that's Indiana Jones searching for the Ark of the Covenant. Even Hollywood is interested in the Ark of the Covenant. Just a little history on it. The Ark was would have set probably under the Dome of the Rock. That's that gold-domed sort of mosque-looking thing in the heart of Jerusalem, Holy of Holies. Underneath that, Ark of the Covenant there. At one time, some say it was moved to a secret underground location near the temple area. I've actually heard the story, Billy, that perhaps two rabbis actually saw it in the 1980s and said they couldn't bring it out into the open because there was no temple. Do you know anything about this 1980s viewing of the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, yeah. And again, Jan, what's really interesting is, of course, one of the studies, we deal with all the rebuilt temple articles that they've been working on for decades. And dare I say, spending millions and millions of dollars on recreating to the Old Testament standards, solid gold, solid silver. I mean, we're talking everything, Mm -hmm. everything you think of. But here's what's interesting. I was just at the Temple Institute last November, and they admit that they're building every single article you can think of. I'm talking shovels, libation vessels, the lottery box, of course, the menorah, the table of showbread, all that stuff, the incense altar, and they've had those done for quite some time, the priesthood garments, all that stuff. We share all that stuff that they've been working on, but they admit there's one article they do not plan on remaking, and that is the Ark of the Covenant. And you're going, well, why would you not make that? Well, what we discovered, and we have it on tape. You could watch the actual interview with your own eyes, but we have it on tape. The reason why is because they believe they know exactly where it's at, and when they get permission to build a temple, they're going to bring it out. That's why, of all articles, they don't need to recreate this one. Let me read you just a quick transcript of one of the videos that we share. And this is an interview with Rabbi Rickman. Well, who's he? Well, he's the director of the Temple Institute who's building these articles. And here's what he said. He said, there's many inquiries about the Ark of the Covenant from all over the world, and they postulate many theories. And he goes into one of the ones that, of course, the History Channel always wants to bring up, and that is really down in Ethiopia. And he basically Mm -hmm. says that's ridiculous. He said, there is, quote, no question about the Ark of the Covenant that it remains in the same chamber as it was hidden by King Josiah Mm -hmm. towards the close of the first temple. That chamber, he says, was personally designed by King Solomon, and it was hidden there, the Ark, together with other items. We know where they are, and an attempt was made a number of years ago to obtain them, but it was not successful. But we certainly believe that when the proper time comes, we shall be able to gather these things for the position and the rebuilt temple. And there's also another report that we share to other rabbis, Rabbi Gurin and Rabbi Getz, in 1982. The report is, and again, you can see it with your own eyes, that they went in at Warren's Gate underneath the Temple Mount area, and they, quote, saw the Ark of the Covenant under there. And, of course, the question was posed, well, why didn't you bring it out? They said, quote, we don't have a place to put it yet, Mm -hmm. but as soon as we have a temple, we will bring it out and put it in the Holy of Holies. So that's not just a tale. This is a story with some credibility. I did not know that. Yeah, exactly. And again, we've got that from multiple sources. And again, these are from three different rabbis. We're not just relying on Hollywood and Indiana Jones. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Again, you can see these interviews, these clips, 
Billy's teachings. It's a 10 DVD set, 20 lessons, the Jewish people and the Antichrist. It's in our store, olivetreeviews.org, views as in viewpoint, olivetreeviews.org. You can call us. You can sign up for my print and e-newsletter. Plenty of products are offered in both the print and e-newsletter. And you can learn more about Pastor Billy Crone and his ministry. Again, it's Sunrise Bible Church, but you want to go to getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone, what's Get a Life Media all about? Why are you trying to tell people to get a life? Well, it's based on, frankly, my testimony. 26 years ago, I found out that you need to get a life through Jesus Christ. He certainly had mercy on me. 1980s ex-headbanger, drug addict, yep. sexual moral, male chauvinist pig guy involved in the occult and New Age, and God radically saved me. As our ministry, but also as all Christians, we're called to share the gospel, which is really encouraging people to get a life through Jesus Christ. And, of course, our heartbeat is to do that through media, hence getalifemedia.com. And so we're looking as many different ways, like yourself, Jan, using media, whatever form it is, whether it be radio or TV or print or social media, to get the good news out that people can know that they can be saved through Jesus Christ, and dare I say, on topic of our context, saved from the seven-year tribulation. Amen. Because we are not going to be appointed unto that time frame that Amen. is uh, seven years of God's wrath. I'm going to play a clip or two, Billy Crone, in the time that we have left, and we're not through with our discussion by any means, emphasizing just how ready everything is to go. Rabbi Chaim Richman is one who talks a lot about it. Let's let him talk about everything that's set to go. For almost 30 years, the Temple Institute has been accomplishing the impossible. We created a menorah of solid gold for the Holy Temple. Everyone thought it couldn't be done. After 10 years of research, we created the breastplate of the high priest. Everyone thought it was impossible. For the first time in 2,000 years, we produced pure olive oil for the menorah. Over 60 vessels have been restored by the Temple Institute. Everyone thought it couldn't be done. All of these things, everyone told us it's impossible. And now we are restoring the commandment of the red heifer, which everyone thought was impossible. But all of the commandments of the Torah are possible and doable. Thank you for being part of the holy work of the Temple Institute. For 2,000 years, we've been waiting for a perfect red heifer, a para duma. You know, people think that finding a real red heifer is impossible, but the truth is, there are thousands of red cows throughout the world. Go to Google and search for images of red cows and you'll see red Angus in America, you'll see Shetland in the Scottish Highlands, and you'll see red cattle in Norfolk Island, just to mention a few. There are many red cows throughout the world, and the challenge is not to find a particular red cow. The challenge is to raise a perfect red heifer according to the exact biblical requirements here in the land of Israel. Well, it's time to stop waiting and start doing. The Temple Institute has embarked upon an unprecedented historical project to raise a herd of red cows here in the land of Israel. After decades of intensive study and research, the Institute has partnered with an Israeli cattleman and, using state-of-the-art technique and under strict rabbinical supervision, we're going to raise a herd of red cows here in Israel. We're going to select a proper candidate from this herd for the fulfillment of the biblical requirements of the commandments of the red heifer. Make no mistake, this project is nothing less than the first stage of the reintroduction of biblical purity into the world, the prerequisite for the rebuilding of the Holy Temple. And it means the king is coming. That's the exciting news, right, Billy? Absolutely. And again, I belabor this point, Jan. Okay, we're talking about a temple, the temple this, the Jewish temple, mm -hmm. the third temple. Stop and take a deep breath. What temple are we talking about? The actual temple that the actual Antichrist is going to go up into, halfway into the seven-year tribulation, and commit the abomination of desolation. That's right. the temple we are talking about that's mentioned in the Scripture in the New Testament 2,000 years ago, the book of Daniel, even further than that. That's the temple that they're ready to build right now. And they have all the details, as the clip just mentioned, even the ashes of a pure red heifer. Exactly right. I gave a teaching at the Proximity Prophecy Conference. It happened to be last January now, some months ago. And I listed, I thought, would be the 10 top stories that tied into end-time issues for 2018. This was early in January, so it was quite relevant to look back on 2018. And one of my 10 top stories is exactly what we're talking about here for the hour, and that is the rekindling of interest in all things temporary.
temple talk and temple activity and utensils and priests getting ready and red heifer and put all of that together. And then you had in December of last year, you had the rebirth of the Sanhedrin. I'm taking three paragraphs off of Lamb Lion Ministries just to explain to people what the Sanhedrin is. And they write, on October 13th, 2004, the Sanhedrin Council of the Jewish Nation was reconstituted for the first time. In 1600 years, the ceremony took place in the Israeli town of Tiberias, located on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. This was the site of the council's last meeting in the year 425 AD. This incredible development, largely ignored by the press, appears to be one more step toward the construction of a Jewish temple in Jerusalem. In the last paragraph, I'll read, the Sanhedrin was officially founded when God ordered Moses to choose 70 men from among the elders of Israel and bring them before the tabernacle, which was the precursor of the temple, where they would receive the anointing of the Spirit to judge the children of Israel, Numbers 11. This tribunal came to be known as the Sanhedrin. Okay, bringing it up to modern time, Billy Crone, they had a very special ceremony last December 2018, and the Sanhedrin invited 70 nations to a Hanukkah dedication of the altar for the third temple, again December just 2018. So again, we have headlines leaping both out of the Bible and the newspaper. Exactly. And again, the Sanhedrin, what's uh, ironic is people need to realize that was the same ruling elite that was here when Jesus was here, the one and only true Messiah, his first coming. Yeah, the Jewish Sanhedrin in place. Now they're back in place just recently, like you said, unfortunately, why isn't this in the news? They're back in existence again, unfortunately, this time, just in time for the Antichrist. Mm. But of all things that they're working on is what they also worked on when they were here the time of Jesus, his first coming, is about building the temple. They're not only going to the Temple Mount, they're researching the exact location for the temple to be on the mount, and they're also pushing for not only the plans to be made, which, by the way, they already have. In fact, we even showed the actual 3D animated plans for the temple, including the Hall of Hewn Stones, mm-hmm. which is the, the meeting place for the Sanhedrin. That's already done. And I'll tell you what, Jen, that to me was kind of freaky because, again, it's an animated 3D of the actual plans, but it gives us a sneak peek into, even though we're not going to be here, but what the actual temple is, if you were walking through it, is going to be yes. like in the seven-year tribulation, including the hall where the Sanhedrin is going to be meeting at. They also are big about recreating the ceremonies, as you mentioned. They just had multiple ceremonies they've had recently, but they had the one where they invited 70 different nations to come to be a part of the temple altar that has been built and to dedicate that. They said that they're inviting people to come to be a part of that, quote, blessing and things of that nature. Another thing that they've actually done, too, as the Sanhedrin is most people don't realize, and I was like, how did this not make the news? Why aren't Christians talking about this one? But the Sanhedrin has actually picked the high priest. They have picked the high priest that is going to be, they believe, the high priest for this rebuilt temple. We show pictures of him, videos of him, and also involved with the Sanhedrin with these recreated ceremonies. His name is Rabbi Baruch Kahane. They said that, obviously, they believe the temple is going to be rebuilt basically any time now. Again, it's incumbent on them that they be ready with everything, not just the articles, not just the priesthood, not just the garments, not just every little individual thing you need, but obviously they need a high priest. So they already picked the guy. He's not only already being trained, but he's already being a part of these recreated temple ceremonies that they're going through. And they're doing a bunch of different ones. And and again, you just mentioned one. And again, Jen, these just happened. Let me just play a clip to back up what you're saying. Shalom. I'm privileged to share an exciting announcement with you today in advance of this week's special Torah reading of Parshat Para. The Temple Institute is now inaugurating a historic and unprecedented program that will identify and select Kohanim whose status of biblical purity enables them to attend to the preparation of the red heifer. This is the second stage of the Institute's far-reaching efforts to restore biblical purity to the world, a continuation of our ongoing program of raising red heifers in Israel. Kohanim are male Jews who are of patriarchal descent of Aaron and thus members of the priestly tribe. If you are a Kohen, born and residing in Israel, and have exercised caution with regards to the laws of biblical purity, you may be eligible to participate in this program. For more information or to help with these efforts, contact us at redheifer at templeinstitute.org. I just find it intriguing. They're sort of advertising for the priests. 
Yeah, exactly. And again, this is another thing that I don't think the Christian community, right, apparently we're distracted again, is they don't realize that they don't just have the priests. We even share clips, information from rabbis saying that we have a whole database. We know That's who right. the priests are of the priestly line. We even talked to, quite a while back in a different study that they even have what's called DNA markers. Everybody's got to get a DNA test, right? Well, they have one that they believe it's called the Cohen gene, of course, the priestly line, that they know exactly who is going to be of the priestly line. They not only have that in place, but they've been training them. They have mm-hmm. actual priest schools, and they've been in existence for a while now. The priesthood is not coming. It's already here, and they're already being trained. And again, they have picked the high priest as well. Let me quote Jam real quick. This is Rabbi Hillel Wise, and he's a spokesman for the Sanhedrin, and he explained the necessity of why they needed to choose a high priest. Now tell me this isn't getting close. He said the only obstacle preventing the temple service today is the political issue. He said if that should change suddenly, and it will when they make Mm -hmm. the covenant with the Antichrist, he says, as it very well could, we we would be required to begin the temple service immediately. It's therefore necessary that we have a candidate prepared to fill the role of the high priest, especially now that we have, quote, not coming, we have Kohanin, or priests, prepared to serve in the temple. And even Rabbi Kahane, the guy that chose the high priest, said, if the government decided to permit it, the structures can be prepared almost overnight. Mm-hmm. That's how close we are. Everything is basically ready to go. But as the Sanhedrin admitted, all it's down to now, it's not a, a temple plan issue. They got the plan. It's not a temple finance issues. They got the finances. It's not a temple article issues. They got them ready to go, and they know where the Ark of the Covenant is, according to them. It's a political issue. Does that not drive you back to Daniel 9.27? Mm-hmm. Could that not be, in fact, as we talked, the dangling carrot that the Antichrist is going to use to, mm-hmm. if you will, put him over the edge to make this deal with him? And that's the event that starts the seven-year tribulation. One thing that Christians, I think, are doing that is just a little bit troubling, and I think you would probably advise against it, as I would as well, and that is I think some are actually contributing financially to the construction of this temple, what would your advice be? My advice would be not to do that, but give me your thoughts. Oh, I'm in full agreement with you. In fact, it's funny you bring that up. I was just preaching at a conference week before last, and of course I was dealing with this topic in one of my messages. Of course, one of the people came up afterwards and said, hey, Pastor Bill, how can we help and or should we help build this temple? I says, well, first of all, we're not going to be here in the seven-year tribulation. I said, but if you really want to help the Jewish people, then don't spend your money on helping build this temple. Spend the money on sharing the gospel with them. There you go. Because if you really want to help the Jewish people, then guess what? There is a way that they can escape, just like the rest of us Gentiles, the seven-year tribulation. They don't have to learn the hard way. They can get saved just like the rest of us if they accept Jesus Christ right now as their Lord and Savior, as the one and only Messiah. So let's spend our time and effort and energy on that because that's the most greatest act of love and mercy. Because again, none of the Jewish people technically have to learn the hard way that Jesus is the Messiah, which is at the midway point as we discussed earlier, if they just get saved now. So spend your time and effort on that. Good point, folks. We couldn't agree more here because you may hear us talk very frequently frequently on Understanding the Times Radio and anything that Olive Tree Ministries does. You may hear us talk about current events, about eschatology, lateness of the hour, Bible prophecy, but in our heart of hearts, we really are evangelistically minded, want to see all men come to faith in Jesus Christ, and gospel was given, frankly, to the Jew first. Real quickly, Billy Crone, one more point here, because you have said in your production that world leaders are weighing in on the building of a temple. Now, we've already talked about the Pope. We've talked about the Islamic world. They're in favor of it, and I am down to just a couple of minutes but what do you mean by world leaders are weighing in on the building of the third temple? Not only have we mentioned briefly before the issue of Donald Trump, and what's going on is that I just quoted the Sanhedrin. Basically, Mm -hmm. they got everything ready to go. It's now just a political issue, i.e. they need somebody to help them pull it off. So they're reaching out to different world leaders. Now, yes, we mentioned our own president, President Donald Trump, but what's wild, Jan, is we share the actual videos on this too. They're also reaching out to, of all people, Vladimir Putin. That's right. We share the actual video clip. He went over there to the Western Wall. You could see it with your own eyes, just like Trump did. And the rabbis are urging not just Trump, but Putin to also help build this temple. And what's wild, he went over there and he was quoted as saying, an Israeli bystander called out in Russian, welcome President Putin. And then Putin responded, he said that he's here because of the importance of the Temple Mount and the Jewish Temple. And then he goes on to say, listen to this, that's exactly the reason I came here to pray for the Temple Mm -hmm. to be built again. It's like, what? 
Are you kidding me? Of all people. But then again, we mentioned that the Muslim community is jumping on the That's bandwagon. Right. And we have a whole study just on Pope Francis and the Vatican and how they want to get their hands on not just the temple, but all of Jerusalem because they want to stage their one world religion event there. And again, they're the ones who are duping some of the rabbis into going along with this universal temple as well. You stir all that together and there's other ones. Yeah. The Jewish people, they're ready to go. But guess who they were seeking for backing? Some of the biggest world leaders on the stage, President Donald Trump. Vladimir Putin, also their own government, but also with the Pope himself. So they are drumming up support to work together. Listen, what's it going to lead to? I think it's going to lead to some leader working together to cut a deal that will not only provide a false peace and safety to get what they are at that final stage, permission to build this temple. Check out the product in my store, olivetreeviews.org. It's the Jewish people and the Antichrist. It's 20 lessons on 10 DVDs, the Jewish people and the Antichrist. We give my office a call. Pastor Billy Crone, thank you so much for sharing with me this hour. You can learn more at his getalifemedia.com. I want to go out saying this. There's a plan. God had a plan for the Jews, number one, to become a nation, that their language would be restored, that Jerusalem would be taken back. The Bible says that the plan included they'd be a burden to the whole world. Jerusalem would be anyway, that they would become a light unto the nations, that they would be a blessing to the whole world, Genesis 12. At the same time, they'd be a source of world conflict, that they would stand up on their feet, a great army, and that they would rebuild their temple. And that's what we've looked at this hour. The hour is late, folks. When nobody has promised it tomorrow, turn your life over to Jesus Christ today before it's too late. I want to thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week.